Okay, people, I want to talk about something that is going on behind the scenes, but yet us as podcasters are kind of ignoring it. And this is a story that was brought up by Jerry Capisci uh, and also uh, some other people that are into this kind of stuff. And it's kind of slipped by podcasters. Um, first of all, I want to talk about um, yesterday, Tom Lavecki came on um, FBS's show. I found that very peculiar because of the fact that FBS has gone after Benisi quite a bit, which this podcast has done and others. John Panisi is a cooperating <coughs> witness. My test my little dog in the background. She doesn't even like John Panisi. But anyway, John Panisi is a cooperating witness. That's what he is. And there's an issue going on right now. You have cooperating witnesses making statements that are, are now being used to get murder cases overturned. And you guys uh, probably know which case I'm talking about if you're really into this genre and you're looking and if you're a big fan of Jerry Capisci, which so many people are, and they read his stuff and they're already up on this. But there's a lot of people that aren't up on this. So let me explain it to you. Uh, first of all, I want to show you this from yesterday. Uh, give me one second. I'll pull it up. Uh, okay, this is the fun part, people. I'm not too great at this, but we're going to do this anyway. This is going to be from, um, let's see. This is going to be from Bald Sicilian Show from yesterday. He has a great show. Subscribe to it. This is no knock on Bald Sicilian. This is a knock on the fact that this question should have been asked because this is the most important question. And this is why podcasters uh, should, no matter what, um, treat everybody equal. You know, if you're going to go after rats, if you're going to go after Gene Barillo, if you're going to go after, uh, if you're going to go after anybody, whether it's um, Johnny A. Light, everybody has to be treated the same. Because these guys are all cooperating witnesses. I mean, and then, you know, all of a sudden, Tom Levecki, Levecki is showing up. You know why he's showing up? Because the feds are pissed. The feds are pissed that they're letting these people have their own shows. I'll give you an example. They go after, uh, okay, perfect example. They go after Gene, uh, Gene Burlo. And he gets in all sorts of trouble for coming online here, doing shows, making fun of people, and they take him off. They threaten to violate his probation. But then you got guys, and all these guys should be treated the same, because then you have guys like Panisi that goes on and literally his words has put into jeopardy a trial, a murder case trial, just think about that. You know, a lot of people uh, went to jail for this trial. It was uh, a murder of Michael Meldish. Mel Michael Meldish, let me give you an idea of who he was. He was a big time uh, killer. I mean, this guy's brother is accused of doing maybe 70 murders or 70 hit contracts. And this guy Meldish had a lot too. They were badasses. But what happens? Uh, they hired someone from the Bloods, and they killed him. That was the claim when these guys went to trial. And Matty Madonna, who died in prison of COVID about a year ago, I believe, uh, he was one of the guys. Uh, Stephen Korea, and uh, you remember Stephen Korea was the head of the Lucchese family. He went down for this. A bunch of people went down for this murder charge. And then you have guys like uh, Frankie Pasqua coming on, saying stuff that is also put it in, and I'll, I'll get to that part, but it's also put this whole case into jeopardy. And then you have Panisi. He's put this case in jeopardy by the things that he said on his podcast. So the feds got to be pissed right now that these loose cannons are going around putting cases in trouble now. So I think the feds are going to be going to get to the point of, no, you guys can't do podcasts. 
you know, you they're still under probation. They're still under federal probation. Think about that. So you're going to put these guys under federal probation, but then you're going to let them come out and do podcasts and put cases in. I mean, you might have some murderers. And most likely, there's a good chance that these guys are going to get off because of Frankie Pasqua and because of uh, what uh, was said by Panisi. Maybe I'm wrong, but they just filed. Okay, and I'm going to show you what he, uh, he did yesterday. Uh, one second, please. And I was wondering, what was this man, Devecchi, Deve uh, Tom Lavecchia, what, what was his whole purpose of uh, wanting to all, all of a sudden be friends with uh, uh, Bolt Sicilian? Um, and it makes perfect sense now. I mean, because he knows that the feds are pissed. The feds cannot be too happy that uh, one of their uh, guys that they have has a podcast is put a major murder case in jeopardy. And let me play this part from the show yesterday. Correct. It Correct. Feels me. It's like, okay, now I'm going to really show these motherfuckers. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I'm really going to yeah. get a... And you know that you know they hate this, right? This is the worst thing that can happen. Because Tom Lavecchia is supposed to hate FBS. F That's not what it's about, Tom Lavecchia. Tom Lavecchia, what it's about right now, it's not about anybody hating you. What it's about is the fact that you're there knowing that your man screwed up. That's what this is about. And you know it. And I'm sure that Panisi knows it by now. Because these guys are going to be pissed that things that Panisi is saying and things that Frankie Pasqua is saying on podcast are going to get this huge case possibly overturned where millions of dollars was spent to put a shitload of gangsters and La Casey family away. FBS is supposed to hate Tom Levecchia. And Tom Levecchia is not supposed to like this one. And FBS, but you know what? The truth of the matter is, again, we can... Listen, trust me, we'll, you know, we'll probably collaborate and there are going to be times where we're going to bite heads because there may be views that we may not share. But again, you could disagree. You don't be disagreeable. And then you take it from there. That's all. Yeah, that's you know? it. I mean, and that's that's something that people forget these days, too, especially yeah. with all the politics and everything. Uh, people forget that uh, it's OK to disagree. It doesn't mean you have to hate each other. Yeah, I got Damien. Thank you for the comment. Damien, I Okay, I always... this part is getting me nauseous. I just wanted to show you this guy shows up on the show suspiciously a couple days later. And it makes no sense why he shows up. He's reaching out to be friends. The fact of the matter is, FBS has a pretty po powerful podcast and it's growing continuously, his show. And people listen to him. That is just my opinion, what this is about. And the, and the matter that he shows up like this and all of a sudden he's concerned uh, is stranger than shit. Well, not that it, shit's that strange, but anyway, uh, I'm going to read from an article from a, uh, a gentleman wrote um, for a great site. I'm not going to read a, the Capisci article because he gets mad if anybody puts his stuff on and then he uh, comes at them. But Capisci is the one that broke this, but Capisci usually breaks this. But I'm just going to read it from uh, what's going on right now. With uh, Just give me one minute and I'll pull this up. Okay. Okay, this is from the commission. It's a classic gangster society. It's on Facebook. For all you guys that, that uh, this kind of stuff, um, this is a great um, site to join. And um, they have a lot of information in here um, that you could use, especially podcasters, if you want to use it. Uh, but this gentleman wrote this, and, um, uh, and he's talking about the article from Ganglands News, which I'm not going to use directly. I'm going to use his article. Because like I said, I don't want Jerry Capisci saying, why are you using our articles? And he has been known to do that. 
Okay, so Greg Smith says, defense lawyer filed a 221-page request for a do-over in the Meldish murder trial. Okay, and uh, just so you people know who Meldish is, he was, uh, um, he ran a drug ring out of the Bronx and Harlem in that area. And he was a vicious killer. And um, what happened is uh, they are saying that Maddie Madonna and Korea, um, they basically hired people uh, to kill this guy. And this guy was in the 60s. So they finally got him. Uh, and even when he got found dead, the Fed said, well, this should have happened a long time ago because this guy Meldish was a badass. And they just happened to get him, you know, and, and when they killed him, uh, bunch of people got arrested for it because, of course, you had some rats come forward and sing about it. But citing numerous... Now, here's where the part comes, and this is what this is based on. This is citing numerous podcast accounts by mob turncoats about the gangland style of the Purple Gang leader, Michael Meldish, that contradicts important testimony by federal investigators. Defense lawyers are seeking a new trial for four convicted Lucchese gangsters. The lawyers also cited dozens of tape recordings of e jailhouse informers that weren't provided to the defense under until a year after the verdict in their request for a new trial in White Plains, New York. Uh, okay, the, the attorney argued that numerous post-trial remarks by cooperating witnesses John Panisi and Frankie Pasqua III about mob violence and the Meldish murder mind the government's contention that the killing was ordered by Lacasey leaders Matthew Manny Madonna and Stephen Stevie Wonder Crea and carried out by mob underlings Terrence Caldwell and Christopher Londino. Uh, the lawyers also wrote a 30 uh, wrote that 33 recorded prison phone calls by inmate De Lista. Uh, that they received after the trial would have discredited his uncooperated testimony that led to, different, to a different verdict. The recordings show he was dealing drugs in prison, had schemed to withdraw his guilty plea by lying, that his lawyer tricked him into taking the plea, and had threatened to implicate his mother and other family members in the crimes if they do not uh, do what he wished. In a 121-page uh, Filing, the attorneys argued the public statements by Panisi and Pasqua on multiple uh, podcasts. The phone calls were recorded by M M I'm sorry, Evan Okay, Evangelista. Evangelista. Okay, I'm sorry about that. People was at the Metropolitan De uh, Detention Center in 2017. Are newly discovered evidence that warrant a new trial for the quartet. They were convicted and in 2019 are, are serving life sentences. You know who's going to have a nice lawsuit if this is true? The Madonna family. Because he died in prison of COVID. Okay. Uh, the attorneys argued that Panisi's assertion that he plotted to kill John Jr. Gotti. Imagine that, John Jr. Gotti. We're talking about Panisi here. And we're talking about Tom Lavecchia all of a sudden becoming friends with people. You know, this all don't make sense. You know, people can get pissed at what I'm saying. I don't really give a shit. We need to report the right stuff. These guys need to stay where the hell they are. They don't need coming over here and becoming our friends and shit. You know, if you're going to go after John, if you're going to go after Barillo, if you're going to go after people like that, it, they all got to be treated equal. Okay, I'm sorry. By federal mobster, uh, federal mob buster that cited the prosecution closed order to convince the jury that the Lucchese family hierarchy hierarchy had to approve the Meldish rub out and were thus guilty of murder. The argument approved by Lucchese family leaders, in particular, uh, Mr. Madonna and Mr. Crea, uh, Korea, I'm sorry, was uh, pre request for the Meldish murders was indispensable to the government case and was presented through testimony of Panisi and investigator uh, Carrillo, uh, John, that uh, investigator John uh, Carrillo, the lawyers wrote. When Carrillo 
had been investigated for the Manhattan, uh, uh, been investigated for the Manhattan U.S. Attorney Office for 15 years, was asked whether an associate or made member can decide to kill someone. Crillo responded, no, the lawyers wrote. Crillo was then asked, who is allowed to make the decision? He wrote, an improved murder can be made, can only be made, Corolla said, by the boss or the acting boss of the family within the dealing of the administration of the family. So the calls for murder and violent crimes cut, always get kicked up to the administration of the family with the final say being made by the boss. Corolla's testimony on that was so important that the lawyers noted that the government reinforced its position during the opening summation by focusing uh, the jury's attention on it. Sitting atop of all of this, what they called administration, the conciliere and the underboss and the boss, the leadership of the family, prosecutor Celia Cohn stated her open remarks, although there were captain soldiers between leadership and what what happened on the streets, make no mistake, the leaders oversee the criminal activity of everyone below them. In its closing argument, the government cited Carrillo's testimony to the jury. The lawyer wrote, stating, if this is a chain of command that has to meet uh, just to iron out the money issue with Landino, you know that they're the ones, the only ones who are going to uh, send out and commit this murder. That's exactly how Special Agent Carrillo told uh, you the mob works. The mob murders is going to be approved by the boss in constellation of administration. The prosecution uh, prosecutor continued that also Panisi understood things from a lifetime around the mob in five years as, made, as a made member of the family. Only administrations could order a soldier to kill someone. Uh, the testimony by Carrillo was critical. The attorneys wrote because the government offered no testimony from Panisi or any Lucchese turncoat that fingered Madonna Acria with the ordering the killing, the lawyers wrote. But during several podcasts, the lawyer wrote, Panisi revealed that a made member doesn't have to seek permission from the administration to injure or kill an associate. So basically, here's what happened. In one word, it was said that you need the prosecution basically did the case and they convicted the top tier of the Lacasey family, saying that only a murder, a murder can only happen with their permission. But then Panisi comes on his broadcast and he says that's not true. He says that a maid member can make that hit without permission. So basically, the the, the permission, the being that he's saying this, it contradicts everything. It contradicts everything that has been said. When once Panisi comes out and says, we could murder this guy without getting permission from the top guys, which means there's no proof that the top guys made the, uh, made the order to kill this guy. In Panisi's own words, on his podcast. And this is why... It has to be considered whether these guys should have podcasts when they're coming out of prison or when they're coming uh, when they're still part of the program or they're still on probation. Panisi's still on federal probation. You know, you know, this is like doesn't make sense here. But during several pot, OK, in one podcast, the lawyers wrote Panisi co-hosts, that's Tom Lavecchia, who showed up. Yesterday, out of the blue, because he knows all this shit's going down right now, but they're not going to talk about it. But this shit's all coming down right now. And there's a lot of people that's embarrassed. In one podcast, a lawyer wrote, Panisi co-host asked him who could make the call to order a hit. Panisi responded that it could come from anybody administration. It could come from a captain. It could come from a friend and from a friend himself. I mean, we know, you know, we spoke about it. We did an episode about John Jr. Okay. And that, you know, so now you got John Jr. God, he's involved and they're talking about, uh, um, and Panisi did a show where he talked about how he followed John Gotti around and he was thinking about uh, trying to hit him when, you know, hey, these, these guys are talking too much. It's like, you, you know, you're coming on these shows and you're starting to talk about cases that you were involved with, cases that you snitched in. 
I mean, and you're not supposed to be talking about shit like this. And Panisi broke the cardinal rule. And you know what? Panisi might get pissed at what I'm saying right now, but this is the truth. And so this is why Tom Lovecchia showed up. He knows that he doesn't want people, other podcasters, attacking Panisi for this. But that's our job. Just like it's their job to attack us. Heck, how many times have I been attacked? How many times have FBS been attacked? Jimmy Calandra, all podcasters. But, you know, do you think Jimmy Calandra is going to talk about anything but Bath Avenue? And, 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 and you know, Jimmy Calandra was friends with Manny Madonna. He should be all over this. And it was his friend. In August, uh, uh, in an August 11th podcast, he revealed that he once targeted, uh, he was once targeted to be whacked by New Jersey-based Lacasey mobster, Joseph Perna, who didn't get permission for that, but was acting on his own. This is, this is, so, you know, Panacee's saying one thing when he's ratting, and then he's saying another thing when he is on his podcast. So Panisi is a big part of this case that gets thrown out. And by reading all this, don't be surprised if this case is tossed, if those murders are. And, and, and you know what? There's going to be some lawsuits filed, especially by the family of Matty Madonna, because he died in, in, in prison of COVID. So basically, uh, they got all these old guys at the top. And they put him in prison on the words of guys that were bullshitting on the stand. And they're admitting they were bullshitting. And now it's coming out. And now we're going to get the Frankie Pasqua. And you know Frankie Pasqua. He showed up on all these shows. He talked a bunch of stuff. So they got to be pissed at Frankie Pasqua right now. I mean, the feds are fuming right now. And, uh, you know, you got to give Jerry Capici credit. Jerry Capici comes up with some uh, marvelous stuff. Um, and, you know, he's the first person to know usually. He's the first person all over this shit. And once again, he's all over this stuff. Regarding Pasqua, the lawyers allege that the prosecutor gave the defense an entirely misleading impression that Pasqua had recanted his initial claims that he was present on the scene where and when Meldish was killed. That prevented them from calling him as a defense witness as Caldwell's attorney had stated he would in his opening remark. They noted that to their surprise, after the turncoat was sentenced to time served, that Pasqua returned to his initial account of the murder in two podcasts. Uh, so we're talking about the John and Gene show and we're talking about um, uh, Vlad. Those were the two podcasts that he showed up on. Uh, returned an initial account of the murder in two podcasts. In those episodes, a discredited cooperated witness stated that he and his father were present and were the in, in, integral part of the planning and the execution of the homicide. In one podcast, he said that they were boots on the ground along with Ladina and Caldwell. So it went from them not being at the murder scene to being at the murder scene. So on a podcast, they literally went and contradicted what they said. That's amazing. It's not amazing. People think about it. These guys are their own worst enemies. See, this is it. They like to talk and they can't shut up. And what they're doing is they're glorifying themselves. So Frankie Pasquale went from not being at the murder scene to being at the murder scene. This is insane. Okay. Uh, we stopped at our nightclubs. We met the guy and gave him a different car. Uh, they didn't have a GPS that could be tracked in their brand new Mercedes. That account contradicts the assertion by prosecutor Scott Hartman a 2018 bail hearing that Pasqua had retracted his earlier statement that his father had killed Meldish. 
and that the feds had confirmed that the duo never got to the Bronx that night because they had tracked the car and it and that it never traveled north of Manhattan. Pasqua's podcast statements established beyond any doubt the lawyers wrote that his father could have killed Meldish since Pasqua has explained in detail how that night before driving to the scene of the homicide, him and his father switched cars at a dealership to a model that uh, did not contain a GPS, then drove to the Bronx to kill Meldish. Uh, his podcast statements are material and warrant a new trial because they undoubtedly establish proof of an alternative perpetrator uh, for the Meldish murder and that uh, they also call into question the entirety of every fact and circumstance surrounding the murder as a whole since Pasqua saw Meldish minutes before he was killed and never said uh, where Ladina and Caldwell were at the time the lawyers wrote. Since Pasqua and his father were with Meldish minutes before the murder, it defies common sense that Pasqua and his father were not immediately involved in the murder. And this is what the lawyer is saying. That evidence is so compelling. They stated it would have uprooted the government's theory of how the murder occurred and helped earn an acquittal for Caldwell and Ladina. The voluminous uh, information the defense uh, obtained after the trial, they submitted, <clears throat> excuse me, 524 pages of exhibits completely dismantle essential components of the testimony of Panisi and Evangelista. Evangelista. Evander, Evangelista. I'm sorry. What a dumb fuck. Okay. Uh, the lawyers wrote, including that the witness has ceased criminal activity and has disclosed all this past criminal conduct to the government. You know, people... Here you got these guys with podcasts or going on podcast. They're talking about testimony that they previously gave and then they're changing it in their podcast. This is unbelievable when you really think about it. You, we're not talking about these guys getting arrested or burglarizing a house or something. We're talking about murder. And we're talking about people that knew about it and gave witness testimony about it. And now it makes you think how many times has this stuff happened? You know, a rat will say anything. I mean, they're going to say anything they get, they could say to get off. You know, they're going to say what the government wants to hear them say. So you're looking at going to jail for life and all of a sudden you go walk out the door the same day. If you give the testimony that they want to hear, if you give the testimony that can get people convicted, that's what it comes down to. Uh, so uh, let's see. Uh, two problems of uh, Evangelista sob story. The defense lawyers noted that he didn't have a wife and doesn't have a daughter. <laughs> he says, listen, I got a daughter. She's seven years old. She's sick and every time, everything my wife needs to take her to the doctor and everything. He said, according to one of the tape recordings that the feds turned over 11 months after the trial ended. Uh, so this guy who's already also involved is, is saying that he has a wife and daughter and he doesn't even have one. And he's using a sob story. And to, to basically get out uh, after the after he received the time served. That's what he got. Time served. This evangelista guy. Like Moss John Gotti, former Gambino consular. Uh, OK, no, that's something else. I'm sorry. OK, so that's the story, people. That's the story. OK, so let's review it. So you have basically this Meldish guy that's murdered. He's a, this is a, a bad dude. You know, him, between him and his brother, they, they had close to a hundred murders between the two of them. I mean, contract murders. And there's no doubt about that. So basically the prosecutor, prosecution said that they murdered these people and they went by the words of Frankie Pasqua and uh, their government witness and then the Panisi and then these guys, Panisi and Pasqua, tell different stories, but they do it on podcast. 
they do it recorded evidence. And so you have career lawyer and you have uh, all these head bosses that were, were basically accused of ordering the murder because these guys are at the top. So you basically have these guys that all go down for the murder. And then the people that convict them, you got Pasqua saying that he was there and that he was basically there with his father and his father shot him. So you got Frankie Pasqua saying that on podcasts, on two podcasts. And then you got Panisi saying a different story on his podcast. So here's what the government has to do. They have to say to themselves, should these rats be allowed to still, I believe that once they get off probation, they should be able to do whatever they want. But if they're on federal probation, should any of them even ever have podcast? If they're going to start overturning convictions. Now, listen, and, and I'm saying this because Frankie Pasqua might be talking on his ass and just want to be something he's not and saying, yeah, me and my dad committed the murder. Uh, and, and so what's going to happen because he said this, a lawyer is going to go into court and he's going to get that charge, those charges overthrown and get those guys out of jail. So this ain't going to be the only, out of prison. And this ain't going to be the only time this happens. This is going to happen over and over again. Because you know why? These guys want to be bigger than what they are. They just want to be something they're not. So they're going to say something to make it sound so big and so huge. You look at John Panisi, you think he's a smart man. But this thing is a move. And it's obvious, Tom Lavecchia, he's, Lavecchia, he's a smart man. He's out there running public relations now. Let, let me go and become friends with somebody that can attack us on this. It's, it's amazing. I mean, this is a huge story, people. This is huge. This is what podcasters should be on. Not shaking hands and being friends. We don't need no friends. We need to report what's going on. You know, that's just pop, part of us being podcasters, part of, the, or of these shows, you know, break stories. Capisci broke a story. So it's our job to report what Capisci broke. And that's what it comes down to. And, you know, we can't have... Uh, just uh, one person talking about it. This is a major story. Nobody wants to hear about some dude dying in prison that's 80 something years old. He lived a long life. He went to jail. Fine. He went to prison. Fine. Uh, and he died. Okay. That's it. it. Has nothing with him doing a stand up guy. We're talking about major murder cases here that are going to probably be thrown out because of rat podcasters. That's what we're talking about. So I'm sure tonight there'll be a response on this. But it doesn't matter. The response is out. I know MRE will be all over this. I'm hoping that he is. But we cannot ignore these things. We cannot ignore these things. You know, I did a video a while back called uh, that said that these guys don't belong on the side of the track tracks. This is why they don't. Okay, us podcasters are that are not rats. Have to remember this. And that's what it comes down to. I got bashed for Barillo. Gene Barillo, supposedly being my friend. Or interviewing John A. Light, who's definitely not my friend. But you can't say and go after somebody for this if these things aren't going to be covered. They got to be covered. No. 
And Jimmy Calandra, I'd like to ask you this question. You always say that Maddie Madonna was good to you in jail and prison and took care of you, took you underneath his wing. How do you feel about this? That that man died in prison of COVID because of these liars. I mean, there's so many things going on here that don't make sense. That's my rebuttal on this today, people. I hope that, you know, I'm going to drop this video. I didn't want to do a live show on this because I just wanted to speak how I feel. And this is what I, I'm saying and that uh, it gets some attention. Thank you. Oh, like and subscribe to my channel.